Today, anyway. Here we are at the uh, offices of Nuclear Blast in London, and it gives me great pleasure to be in company of Joachim and Pa from Sabaton. Yes, hello. Guys, good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Good, and um, we're here to talk about the eighth studio album, which is coming out 19th of August, The Last Stand. Yes. And it's a, a concept album, taking inspiration from Battle was a guy who's just yeah, I guess it's stuck in the corner, guy stuck in the corner, the last stand. Yeah, you know? I guess it's, you know, uh, following that, you know, concept of the last stand over to an, almost two and a half thousand years of military history. So it was kind of nice for us as well to, you know, open up uh, and not only go in, you know, modern warfare where mm. we usually have been. I mean, obviously we went back a little bit to Carolus Rex, but uh, it was kind of interesting to try and get proper facts from whatever happened 480 well, years ago. So, so this album, you go all the way back with Sparta, you know, the Persian Empire, which is like 480 BC. You've got modern themes on, on there, the Afghan Soviet War. So, yeah, like you yeah. say, you have, you must have a big history book at home. Well, <laughs> we, we have a big library of ideas. Obviously, uh, we come from Sweden and we are not historical professors and we, uh, we don't actually know everything that happened around mm. the world. We couldn't impossibly yeah. know that because yeah. we do actually play every male most of the time. <laughs> so, uh, but a lot of ideas come in everywhere, you know, when we walk the streets and we, we hear something, we see a movie, we yeah. see a documentary, we meet some fans uh, or we get emails from fans and we send them down. Uh -huh. So yes, the library is growing, yes it is, and there is plenty of ideas there and some of them made it to this album, some fans have contributed with ideas that we wouldn't know if it wasn't yeah. for them, because obviously, sitting home in Sweden, we wouldn't know the whole world's well, history. Of course, it's like me in England, you know, TV only covers the wars that they want us to know about, what we're interested yeah. about. But obviously, wars in some corners of the world don't really make the news, so we do travel around the world, like you say, you meet fans and... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually one of the nicest things to actually see, you know, as you said, about the news. We can see the same, we can see media coverage of the same event, uh, because maybe we, we travel pretty fast sometimes. We can yeah. be in America one day, we can be in Russia the <laughs> next day, in Israel the third day. And trust me, how news are reported sometimes can yeah. vary quite oh, yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah. you know? Yeah, there's, uh, there's no black and white. That's what we've learned. There's always minimum two sides of the story. And uh, usually it's the, the one who is the victorious mm. one who, who gets to tell the story. Um, in this, in Sabaton, it is we who tell the story in the way we find most interesting and the way usually we are told the story, we find out about it. So we are not making any personal judgment about uh, which side would we tell the story from. It is not about that and we are not telling people what to think, what to vote, what to do. Mm. It is not up to us to make people change up their minds because, yeah, even if we say a story from a certain point of view, I mean, they're always going to be the other side. Have you ever upset anybody around the world? Has anybody ever come to you and said, oh, you shouldn't be singing about this subject? Well, oh, yeah, oh, Germans. <laughs> Germans have been very upset by, by our songs in the beginning, oh, yeah. uh, definitely. The first album, Prima Victoria, was uh, not allowed to be released upon release date in Germany because we were using the word Nazi yeah. And uh, some distributor thought that it was a neo-Nazi propaganda album or something mm. like that. So we had to send the lyrics and then they, uh, after a while they were like, this is actually good. Mm. So we can release it. Mm. And uh, we also had like uh, people saying, well, you cannot play the song at Teatro Minatus when you play in Berlin because it's Berlin is burning. But we play that song in Berlin. That worked out fine. They, they all and the funny all. thing is, it's everyone else yeah. is be, everyone is being offended that someone yeah. else is going to be offended. But it's, nobody's offended. It's no different from Hollywood making a movie. No, it they can, so. it, it <laughs> is. It, it is definitely not. I mean, but the thing is that music has often been used in political uh, uses. A lot of artists use it for political mm -hmm. to tell you know, to get their whatever will through. And that's why a lot of people think that we do it too. And Sabaton can quite easily, if you only hear something and you don't see the full picture and don't take it out of context, exactly, yeah, then, yeah. then you may definitely misunderstand Sabaton. That's for sure. A lot of people, I can totally understand that. One song on the radio and you can totally misunderstand yeah. what it is about. The good thing these days is that we have a few fans out there 
uh, around the world who is uh, very good. They're going army of fans. <laughs> yeah, well, and they are very, very good at yeah. if there is somebody who claims something or tells something that Sabaton is this or that, there is always going to be some fan around who says, no, 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 this is Sabaton, yeah. you are wrong. Well, like that, Sabaton are a fun band. You know, that's the important message of Sabaton, and it's. You don't write that too much recent history. I think the Soviet Afghan thing, I, I think that's about the most recent sort of song you've come with. No, actually, we did uh, the, the Panzer Battalion, the rock conflict, the three. Covered about the Falklands before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was 82, though. Yeah. So, so we, we've been a few times closer to, to modern times, but we try to stay where it's a little bit yeah. more. So it yeah. takes some time usually for all the textures to surface. Yeah. We want to be as historically correct as possible. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if it just happened yesterday, you don't know the facts already, you know? Yeah. And um, I was going to ask you about that. You say you've got to get the lyrics correct. Now, a lot of bands, they, they go into the studio, the song's half finished, like English just scribbled down notes and a handkerchief at the last minute. With you, you can't do that. No. The lyrics. <laughs> so, how far in advance are the lyrics written? We are actually scraping the surface, you know, scratching the surface on all of the ideas we have a long time ahead, but we never, uh, we stopped doing deep research until we know it's happening. Mm -hmm. Because we noticed that we do it, you know, one year in advance, and then you lost maybe the passion for the subject. But if we, you know, you know, we scratch the surface everywhere and there, you know, this last time would be really good with this song. I mean, they, or, okay, let's do it in, in three days, we say or something. We go and then we do the research. It could be documentaries, it could be internet, of course, yeah. books, and, uh, we make, you know, small notes, you know, on words or phrases that come into our mind when we're watching this. And then we sit down and do it, because then it's fresh. We've just discovered it. And that's, you know, when you're passionate about it, that's when you tell a story best. Yeah, yeah. So we actually do it, in not last minute, but we kind of drag, drag out on it until we're ready to really give it the time and are ready to write the lyrics itself. Right. Well, what I've mentioned is I've just covered wars from all over the centuries. There's one there, like, based in Scotland. The blood of uh, Barrack Byrne from the 14th century. So, do you sort of do you try to get yourself into the mindset of 14th century people? Well, uh, not to t I, I wouldn't understand how people at that time were, except for what you know, kind of emotions and things we get from movies and documentaries mm -hmm. about it. So, uh, obviously, this song uh, wouldn't have been there unless the movie Braveheart was out mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and really like, oh, I, I love the story, and even though that's um, a long time and it's not exactly about the same thing, but it connects very closely mm -hmm. because the movie Braveheart ends with a lot of Band of Burns dogs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the only way to get into that, the closest one, would be actually to see something like that and try to imagine mm -hmm. yourself being there. And the song was written initially with the Hammond organ as the lead instrument and stuff like that. And we we later added the bagpipes to make make it uh, to make the atmosphere perfect for the song. And do you like the sound of the bagpipes? Because I think we just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason <laughs> actually, I, I must say, normally I was really when we talked about it, I was in, didn't think it was going to work because I mean bagpipes are kind of nasal and harsh, mm. you know, in, in the way they sound. I think they can sound really cool when you know marching over the hills and it's just a bagpipe and a drum. But I've rarely heard it work well with other instruments. But that mm. I think is due to Peter Tekken, our think, producer, who actually yeah. made it work, you know, in the mix. I think it's been a couple of songs, ACDC, It's a Long Way to the Top, yeah. Bagpipes, Nazareth. How the dog. Yes. And that was a Scottish band as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's not many. That's good to have it on there. And uh, do you get a chance to visit historical sites? Like we do get some downtime. Do you, are you are you the kind of person that like to visit museums? Well, we we've been to several places where we sing about. Um, Hopefully, we're part of yes, the place. On this yeah. album, yeah. we've been to Belgrade, obviously, where we sing about too on this yeah. album. Yeah. And. Uh, we haven't been to Bannockburn exactly, but we've been close around. Uh, we've been to the Vatican, I have at least. Yeah, mm. which also happens. Vatican and... Uh, I mean, it's lucky this time we actually got to visit these places in advance, because mm. now we you know, started to get catch up on our planning, you know? Yeah. Because back in the day, you know, we played... we never been to Gallipoli when we wrote the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite songs in yeah. our career. And then when you we got to the place, you know, which is half a year after we wrote the song, and we were like, 
now you'd improve, but we could have done it a little bit better if we were here before, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've been to Gallipoli, we've been to Auschwitz, we've been to Bismarck, yeah. Bismarck. Where 40 to 1 takes place. Yeah, and we've been to... Oh, well, uh, here, London. London. Yeah. Battle of Britain. <laughs> it's an yeah. And we've been to Berlin, obviously. And Warsaw. And uh, Warsaw. A, a lot of places where we sing about we've been. Yeah. And there is still, still some to be. Uh, uh, well, it's never ended, really. <laughs> There's well, some, some we might ever, never go to, but let's see. <laughs> and um, especially like the more modern conflicts, obviously people from World War One, I, I think they've all passed away now. There's still survivors yeah, in World War true. Two and more modern wars. Do you ever get a chance to speak to veterans that have been in battles? Yeah. 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 Not as World War One veteran, but we met a couple of World War Two when the wars are uprising, and we met families and kids mm. from, you know, Audie Murphy, also. Uh, Franz Stiegler and Charlie Brown, kids, of course. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a... On, on Heroes album, we have a song called Smoking Snakes. And we played in Brazil. And, and it's the photo outside of Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, mm. and uh, one of one person from the Smoking Snakes actually came to our show. Uh, was came an old, the room. old yeah. friend of the yeah. people that we sing about. And yeah, he was in that battle as yeah. well. Oh. And then he, he was... We, we were talking before the show, and then we thought he's gonna go home. But he said, "No, I stay." And we were like, "Well, it's gonna be quite rough and tough out there." And then he's just like, "I survived World War II, <laughs> so I think I survived your heavy metal show." <laughs> and it, it was uh, he was standing there the whole show and really enjoyed it. And you know, some people say, "Oh, you are, uh, you know, you're kind of heavy metal, and the way you deliver the songs, you, you play them with a smile on the stage, mm. and." It's not really honoring the people you sing about. Well, we have met a lot of the people that yeah. we sing about, and we have been receiving so many thanks from people who are sons and grandsons and daughters and granddaughters of the people the, mm. that we sing about, and they are all very happy the way we do it. They, they think we are honoring it mm. in a very good way. I think that's an interesting point you said. Like, obviously, a lot of your fans are young. But we've all got granddads that served in the yeah. First World War, I have myself, and even, I don't know too much of his history, and it is really like songs like yours that we do go back and do the research, really. Yeah, yeah, but if you have to play a part in that. We, we, we're, not, we're not here to educate anyone, but if somebody learned, that's a happy by effect. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I love to play heavy metal, obviously, <laughs> and uh, I, I do take the music seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously, yeah. pretty much, you know. If we can have, you know, piss each other on stage and through the microphones and we get, <laughs> try and get each other off balance, that's a good win, you know? <laughs> well, let's talk about your love of metal, because there are some bonus tracks on the album, and um, it's Iron Maiden, yep. Afraid to Shoot Strangers, Judas Priest, All Guns Blazing. Just, just a bit like myself, know. the classic textbook heavy metal bands, you know? Yeah, I mean, th this is, we've been playing several shows with Iron Maiden, mm. we're big fans of Iron Maiden, and this was a great, yeah, an idea to... Did a couple with Judas as well. Yeah, yeah and we, we played with Judas Priest as well, so yeah, but it was an idea to, to put some homage, you know, to, to those bands. And uh, Chris, our guitar player, is the biggest Iron Maiden fan mm. in the band, probably, and, and he was uh, allowed to choose freely, like, which one would you like to cover? And choose that, that one. And the August Blazing by Judas Priest, uh, we already had the other guitar player, Tobin, and he was doing that just for yeah. fun with himself, just singing. And then we thought, okay, it sounds cool, but we need to add you a cumin to this yeah. and incorporate the rest of the band. So we kind of did a cover where it's a duet between Joachim and, uh, and Tobel, our main. I mean, yeah. how, many, how many times when we were teenagers <laughs> were we drunk singing along to all mm. Blazing? I mean, I found myself barely even need, I didn't even need the lyric sheet because, you know, <laughs> you know, he has to check up all some words. And well, what does it mean to you? Like, it's like, you know, you, you supported Judas Priest, you recently supported Iron Maiden, big heroes of yours as children, so we do finally get to support them. What, what does it mean to you? You know, what, what, what feelings do you have? There, it is very inspiring to be on tour with Iron Maiden and, and other classical bands who's been around for so long, you know? Uh, we are touring with bands who is already sick and tired of touring and they haven't been around for mm. half the time of those bands. And then you see why are they doing it and that's the reason. Mm. They are not there just because they can get some more money out of it or anything like that. They are there because they love to play. Mm. And this is the reason it should be and that's what it's inspiring to be around them. And you know, build a team around you that lasts for a very, very many years. Yeah. Crew members who stick around, who you can rely on. This is something that has inspired Sabaton over the years too. 
And uh, yeah, I've got a, a tour coming up. Um, well, you're touring all through the summer festivals, but yeah. next year you've got the tour, and uh, you called it the last tour. No, and, uh, the last just to uh, make sure that your fans are they're not getting panicking, it's not the last tour, is well, it? Well, it could be. We well, could die. <laughs> you can finish it, you know. You never know. Uh, uh, the plan is not to quit, no. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, fans says me that you never know. And I mean, to be honest, we're a competitive band. You know, if we go on stage, we will try to be the best band on that stage that night. And we found out that the status quo started their farewell tour in 1984. <laughs> they got a fucking 32 year old head start, you know. Or 34 year old. Scorpion's been on a final tour for the last five years. Yeah, or so. soon they'll be touring with them for the second time on their farewell tour. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to start our farewell tour in time too. <laughs> and um, I think it surprised a lot of fans, you've got to accept supporting you. And obviously, I think they go for like, a younger market. Yeah, but, well, we wanted. That's very brave of you to have accepted. We wanted yeah. to have a really good band because it is our obligation towards our fans to provide them with a really good night. Mm -hmm. And to see that, we wanted to have something that was uh, appealing to both our older friends, uh, fans and younger fans. And there's a lot of uh, younger people who don't know except these mm. days. They will be experiencing one of the best heavy metal bands. And there's ever. a lot of older fans who are not too sure of you guys. Well, there, there's uh, also that. Of course, in uh, fact, that Accept has and also, I mean, going on after a band, I mean, I still think Accept is great. Mm. Today, they are not only relying on what they did 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, they're still putting out good albums, Definitely, yeah. and they do great shows. And you know, that'll put us, you know, put us in a, in a you know, anxious or nervous <laughs> mood. And I know that's what we're best, you know, yeah. that you know, oh, damn, these guys are good, man. We've got to step up the game now. And that's so you'd be on your own last day, you'd be in the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good today, man. What am I going to... And what was you fans of them as children yourself, when you were younger years? For me, I was a huge success. Yeah. Uh, it's still, I would say, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's, it's one of those bands you always, every now and then, put on an album and listen to, and like, yeah, this is great music. It's perfect live music. It's basically songs written to mm. perform live. Yeah. And uh, tell us about the artwork. I believe we've got the same artist on the artwork for the album cover, I guess. Yeah, the artwork on this one is done by Peter, who's been doing her artworks for a couple of years. We had the idea to represent the stories of the album on the artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time we started to work on the artwork, we didn't have exactly all the stories. We had a few ones which we knew was going to be there, and that's why they are there. There's a samurai there. There's the Spartans, there's the Wing mm -hmm. Hussars, and they made it onto the album because we felt these ones will definitely be there. And also, it's you know it's kind of nice that the cover actually. I mean, I think I'm not gonna point any finger, but sometimes these days it feels like the album artwork is just there to sell a product or slap something onto a piece of paper. I, we love to have you know the the artwork representing the album, you can figure out, it's called The Last Stand, you can see, ah, so you're giving some hints without giving it all away at the same time. Mm. And I think it's kind of important, I still remember when I bought the vinyls. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's a good package, I believe that like, initial copies have got like, a live DVD. Yeah, the package, where's that filmed? We, we filmed a concert for French television in Nantes, and uh, Initially, it was just supposed to be for French TV, but when we saw it, also. yeah, and, and a shorter version for 60 minutes. But when we saw it, we felt, wow, this this show has so much passion mm. and energy inside, because we were all relaxed. We didn't even imagine that it was recorded. It was nothing special that night. It was just a normal club show. But then we realized, wow. This is really what it's about. I mean, when, when you see the DVDs that we put out on the big stages mm -hmm. with all the fireworks and stuff, this is, this is one type of settlement. You can hear, you can see the passionate with a small, intimate sh club show. And we wanted to show that too, because we thought this is way too good just for French people to, to see. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we decided to put this out for, for the rest of the world too. So, and it's definitely exciting uh, watching this one. I've been watching it several times. Yeah. I think it's one of the best, you know, live shows we did because it's, you know, with a big production like Bucking, I love doing that. Yeah. But I'm so nervous I can can think, and there's a big production meeting before. Okay, you gotta remember this yeah. on time there, and then also, you know, not like we're gonna go into commercial. I have to remember that, but maybe 
need to say this, and you know, all of these things that's going through your head. Yeah. So you're not enjoying it. But this one, as Pastor said, we just went on stage, and we played, and the crowd was close, and we had a great atmosphere, and everybody in the band was playing good. We even had Yunus was mixing it like, it's what the fuck have you have you learned how to play all of a sudden? You know? <laughs> this sounds fantastic. I don't have to do any edits or nothing, I just mix, you know. Brilliant. It all finally it all came together when we had yeah. cameras going, you know. Yeah. So it's great, it's going to make for a great double package. And um, before I wrap this interview up, I know, I know Joachim, you're a big Deep Purple fan, or I assume you are as well, Kurt. And um, did you see Richard Blackmore on his recent dates? Yes, I saw the set. second show yesterday, I saw Stuttgart on the Monsters of Rock. That was fantastic. I gotta say, uh, you know, I love both Rainbow and Deep Purple. I was so happy to see him play, you know, so it's like Perfect Strangers, and yeah. I would have expected to hear that, you know? Yeah. Uh, they did a smoke on the water, I couldn't have been without that one. <laughs> but I guess that's the one they have to play. But in general, I will say, wow, what a band he's put in. And people say, yeah, it's not the same guys that know. But Richie always had a history of bringing in the new guys. Well, David Coverdale was Exactly. Who, who, yeah. who heard of David Coverdale before he picked them up? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, who heard of, uh, you know, he's brought so many, so many. I mean, he was there, but nobody heard of him, Dio. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was being a support band at the time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He wasn't famous back then, no. So, uh, I think he did a fantastic job in picking the band, and uh, damn, that was a good night. And did you, see, when, did you see Richie Blackmore before with Deep Purple in the past? Never did, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I have seen Deep Purple, but with a uh, modern one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still believe, though, I think one of my favorite live DVDs ever is Come Hell or I Watch. Mm -hmm. That one. Really good. Then the live CD, I think it was you who recommended it. Yeah, was actually. Live Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They have the longer jams and stuff, yeah. Longer version of Anya, yeah, fantastic. Any message for your fans? Oh, um, we would like to say to the fans that they're looking for, they should be looking forward to the new album, for sure. Because the new album stretches out. You will not be disappointed. You will be excited, as we are. Uh, when we first recorded it and we had the new album, we didn't really fully understand what we had created. But now, as more people have put in uh, feedback towards us, we start to you know, see it more clearly as an album. And we realize that, yes, it is a traditional Sabaton album in a lot of ways, but this one is definitely sticking out. So probably this will be a long-lasting album and fans will definitely be enjoying so many songs they will be discovering one song and then probably mm -hmm. after a little while they will have an another favorite track because that is what we feel now and that's what the journalists who have already mm -hmm. heard the album feels too a son of a good album and we'll yeah. disagree on what's the best song <laughs> we just found out you know Oh, was it? We, you calculated a couple of days ago. We done. Uh, we just passed uh, the hundred show mark in the UK. We done over over a hundred shows wow. here, and uh, I can honestly say, yeah. almost all of them were good times. So, thank you. Fantastic. Well, well, just, nice. just forgot to mention, you got your own festival in. Is it Falun? Yeah. And to tell us more about it, it's, it's not just a Sabaton show, you've got Saxon, Lordy, Dragon Falls, many others. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we started the festival, it is now nine years ago, <laughs> and uh, it was just a basic idea to celebrate the release of the Art of War album. Now we will have another release party <laughs> colliding with it, because it will be the last stand released on the same day as our festival. So it will be a celebration for wow. that. And over the years, the festival has grown from a single indoor event with one stage and a few local bands to uh, become one of the most international festivals yeah. in Sweden uh, with two stages and three days open air. So it has definitely evolved to become something yeah. much bigger than we intended it from the beginning. Another band heavily involved in the organization of it all, or was it just got too big? In, in the, in the beginning, we were very much involved. I mean, I remember 2009, the second year, we had it outside in the parking lot, yeah. it was raining, there was one guy, in a, we had to put the, you know, uh, the street lights back up, and that was me and him, everybody else <laughs> left, you know. So, yeah, we, we've done it all in that festival, but I, I still like it, because it started out as, you know, we said a release party, yeah. and we invited bands we liked, we invited bands we toured with, and you know, younger bands that we thought never got the attention mm -hmm. they deserved. And in a way, that's 
pretty much still what we're doing. Is that the show where all your family and friends have come to? And yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously because it's in our hometown, old friends will yeah. come and uh, stuff like that. And fans who have seen Sabaton many times in Germany, in England, or, or in uh, Poland, or in America, they come here because they know yeah. it's a different kind yeah, of yeah. show. And the atmosphere of having such an international crowd is we, very. We unique. can also be a bit more free with the set list, yeah. uh, especially because if you play Bakken, uh, you're putting up a pretty much, not totally, but pretty much a kind of predictable mm. live set because you want you know to play the hits, you want to go mm. make a DVD, you want everybody to sing along and have a good time at the same time because not everybody is looking is hardcore Sabaton fans, you know. Uh, at the Fallen Festival, we I think most people have seen several Sabaton shows. So that's where we, and also on our cruise, we, we, we throw in the odd songs, the stuff that we haven't played in, you know, eight years. Maybe. Mm. So that's kind of nice for us as well. It keeps us on our toes, you know. We can't just go and do yeah. another one. Even if we play one of the most unexpected tracks, yeah. fans in our festival is going to sing along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great to hear. Joe Kim, past me great talking to you. The album, The Last Dance, is out on 19th of August. Yes. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, wow. I can't wait for the tour next year as well. See you on tour. Well, do. Cheers. All the best. Thank you very much.